wireless networks becoming very popular since last decade. The wireless networking can be found everywhere including airports, hotels, coffee shops, libraries, and other areas. There are many advantages of wireless networking. However, there are security problems with wireless networks. Today, we will review some of important aspect of wireless security. Welcome team. Today, we are going to review our wireless networking and security. Let's visualize the advantages of wireless network in our office. Just notice how our staff is using wireless devices freely. The ability to become more mobile due to the lack of wires has been a big motivator in the adoption of the wireless net. There are many benefits of using wireless net. On the other hand, the risks associated with wireless networks have increased, in some cases dramatically. We have amazing team to work in this project. Imran is our expert in wireless network. Roger is good in network infrastructure and Carol is our IT expert. I will be a facilitator. Well, in this project we are focusing rightly on the various types of wireless networks and explore their vulnerabilities, security risks, and how to penetrate and secure them. Wireless networks, or Wi-Fi, fall into the range of technologies covered under the IEEE 802.11 standard. The 802.11 standard series includes A, B, G, N, A, C and others. Imran, please help us understand more about IEEE 802.11 standard. Sure. A wireless network uses radio waves to transmit data. The technical details that define the wireless network and 802.11 occur at the physical layer of the network. The Wi-Fi standard defines many details, including how to manage a connection through techniques such as direct sequence spread spectrum DSSS, frequency hopping spread spectrum FHSS, infrared IR, and orthogonal frequency division multiplexing OFDM. There is a specific wireless security standard. Imran, can you help us to learn more? which is a wireless security standard. IEEE 802.11i2004, or 802.11i, is an amendment to the original IEEE 802.11. This standard specifies security mechanisms for wireless networks. 802.11i replaced the previous WEP. There are four environments built around the wireless technology. First, a hardware or software based access point. Second, multiple access points. Third, LAN to LAN wireless network. And fourth, 3G or 4G hotspot. Once a wireless access point or wireless network is established, the next step involves getting clients to attach to it in order to transmit data. This is the job of the SSID. An access point will broadcast the service set identifier SSID, which will be used by clients to identify and attach to the network. SSID is the text string that is 123. An access point will broadcast an SSID, which will be used by clients to identify and attach to the network. The end users can see SSID when they are searching for a Wi-Fi net. There is a security mechanism for accessing wireless network. Access point AP are using two types of authentication, one, open end, two, shared key authentication. In shared key authentication, each client receives the key ahead of time and then can connect to the network as needed. One of the big concerns with wireless networks is the data is vulnerable when being transmitted over the air. Without proper protection, the transmitted data can be sniffed. To prevent or at least mitigate this issue, encryption is a layer of security that is included in most, if not all, wireless products. There are some of the more commonly used wireless encryption and authentication protocols in use. 1. Wired Equivalent Privacy WEP. 2. Wi-Fi Protected Access WPA.
WPA uses Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, KIP, Message Integrity Code, MIC, and Advanced Encryption Standard, AES, encryption as its main mechanism for securing information. WPA2 is the successor to WPA. WPA2 is much stronger and uses tougher encryption in the form of AES and counter mode with cipher blockchaining message authentication code protocol. The WPA2 standard also comes in a version that uses stronger systems such as extensible authentication protocol, EAP, TKIP, and AES, with longer keys. TKIP is used as an enhancement to WPA over WEP. AES is a symmetric key encryption, used in WPA2 as a replacement for TKIP. EAP is incorporated into multiple authentication methods, such as token cards, Kerberos, and certificates. Cisco has developed a proprietary WLAN authentication protocol, LEAP. Remote Authentication Dial-in User Service, RADIUS, is a centralized authentication and authorization management system. 802.11i is an IEEE security standard for 802.11 Wi-Fi Net. Thank you, Emron. Wireless network seems pretty complex but secure. Is there any threat to our wireless network? Should we bother about it? Please, share if you know more about it. Well well. There are so many wireless network vulnerabilities, threats, risks and attacks. You cannot believe how many risks are roaring around it. Let's learn about these. There are many types of attacks, access control attacks, integrity attacks, confidentiality attacks, availability attacks, authentication attacks, rogue access point attack. There are more attack types including client misassociation, misconfigured access point attack, unauthorized association, ad hoc connection attack, Interestingly, we have more in the list including, Honeyspot Access Point Attack, APMAX Spoofing, Denial of Service Attack, Jamming Signal Attack and so on. These attacks can be broadly categorized in two types, 1. Cryptographic Attacks or Crypto Attacks, 2. Non-Cryptographic Attacks or Non-Crypto Attacks. A cryptographic attack is a method for circumventing the security of a cryptographic system by finding a weakness in a code, cipher, cryptographic protocol or key management scheme. Let's match the type of wireless attack to their examples. A. Access control attack targets 1. Unauthorized association. So does the B to 2 and C to 3. Imran, I heard that it is very important for wireless hacker to discover and analyze wireless network. Do they use any tools? Please help us understand more. Absolutely right, Parish. They do use tools and techniques for those purposes. For example, war driving is a way that bad guys use so as to find access points wherever they can be. War chalking is another method that was used so as to determine where one could get a wireless access signal. Someone detects a wireless access point then make a drawing. Bad guys uses war driving and war chalking method for finding their target. I will give you another example. You set up an access point outside a company network, but with the same SSID as the corporate Wi-Fi network. This type of attack is known as the evil twin, another example of Bluetooth attacks known as blues macking that overflows the target device with random packets and causes DOS and also causes the device to crash. My sister was attacked with another Bluetooth attack known as a bluejacking. It is a means of sending unsolicited messages to a Bluetooth enabled device. Imran, any solutions? Let me allow to explain one more attack and then we discuss solutions. For example, a Wi-Fi jammer can be used to shut down a wireless network while it is running. Strange, there are also honey spots mainly intended to attract victims to attach to it with the intention of gathering information. Hence there are so many ways to trap the normal users. Carol, you asked about solutions. And our project is also to secure a wireless network in the office and home. 
let me allow to share my TV interview on how to secure Wi-Fi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tech for you show. My name is Jerry King and we have wireless security expert, Mr. Emron with us. Welcome Emron. Hi Emron, we know there are so many dangers of wireless networks. But what are the solutions? Let's quickly share those solutions with our viewers. Hello Mr. Jerry King. Let me allow to share some basics and advanced security tips and techniques. Tip number one, change default administrator username and passwords of your wireless router or access point. This is very important. Many people keeps the same and hacker knows it. Tip number two, change the default SSID name and don't broadcast your SSID. Very important. As many as 50% people keep their default SSID names and 78% never hide their SSID. Tip number three is most important. First, use a strong password and second, always use good wireless encryption like the WPA2. This alone will minimize 50% of risks. Tip number four, turn off guest networking and turn on device lists. This feature will allow you to see who and which devices are connected with your wireless access points. Wow! You have already helped our viewers to minimize their risks by 50%. Well, Mr. Emron, is there any advanced tips for wireless security? Obviously there are many advanced tips for security professionals. Our tip number 5 would be enable MAC address filtering. This settings is not allowing unknown devices in your net. Tip number 6, enable firewalls on each computer and the router. A packet filtering firewall works at layer 3 of the OSI model and can be implemented with tools such as Wireshark. Tip number 7, use another layer of encryption when possible. Don't just rely on wireless encryption but also use for instance, OpenSSH is an excellent choice for another layer. Finally, keep your firmware up to date and also shut down your wireless network and interface were not in use. Many company keeps their AP at secure site. Awesome, very useful tips and security solutions. Mr. Emron we thank you and our viewers to stay with us today. Bye bye everyone and see you next week in tech for you show. Hi team. This is the brilliant start of our project on securing wireless network. I thank you all from bottom of my heart. Let's continue development work. Cheers.